All right. I think I will start now. Um, like last year, we did a little buff um, on ideas and things we could do. So I would like to repeat that because we actually got something useful out of it last year, namely prof vendor profiles, which is waiting to be released with the next version of Lintian. So um, I have put down some possible topics we can debate, and you're free to, well, uh, to propose your own. So on anyone who wants to speak about any of the topics here, wants to know more about those, or have a topic to propose, there. So, fine. Uh, shit. Uh, parents. All right. Maybe another. Fourteen? Yeah. All right. So, so if there are any suggestions or ideas, no. What Lintian is? Okay, um, I suppose I could give a short run of that. Lintian is our static analysis tool for checking packages for common sets of errors. Um, it is currently used on upload to check for a number of uh, FTP master auto reject tags, um, which actually auto rejects packages with these tags in them or these flaws. Um, That. Yes, um, so it's a tool which is quite helpful for most maintainers to find out if they have made a common mistake or a serious mistake in their package. And it detects a wide range of things. Not that, but it detects a wide range of things from uh, spelling mistakes, common ones, to share things like package validation, um, I mean, uh, broken packages to missing fields and possibly missing fields. So we have our... Is that a question? Did it an extra one? Because it's also in the top. Right. Um, checks requiring internet access I am inclined to believe that would fall under Lintian Extra, as would uh, checks requiring or using the app cache or packages files on the system. Um, although the idea is great, we did have a suggestion for using the app cache for checking broken dependencies or so. Basically, one of the design choices in Lintian has been that we do not require uh, rely on the system state in most cases, in almost all cases. Um, so they would fall under Lintian Express as a non-official Lintian check, most likely. That or they would fall under the static analysis framework where you would be able to use. The plan is that we would refactor part of the Lintian code. So you could hand our code a package. We would unpack the required things you need from it and you would do your own check, uh, which does not have to comply with outputting a tag or so. Um, are there any? No? So one of the new, uh, there was a question? I'm sorry, you, um, you mentioned there are um, multi-version You mentioned there are multi-version architecture support. Uh, so in the in the past there have been a few checks that we've been unable to perform because we're 
essentially only checking one thing at a time. Uh, so it's difficult to check for things like file conflicts between packages that don't conflict with each other, for instance. Um, is that something that you're thinking of gluing into the SEM framework? Um, my, you're saying with the uh, architecture thing, the multiple architecture? Right, uh, so that's uh, uh, processing multiple packages at the same time, according to uh, your gobby notes. C could that extend to uh, having a little more context of what's happening in, the, in, in wider parts of the archive? so that Lintian could do more accurate checks on the interactions between packages as well as on packages themselves? Um, yes. Um, to clear, let's see how. The multiple version architecture support would be not for um, an archive-wide scan. Th what I had in mind here was if you hand me the old version, or the, the old version and a new version of a package, it could do for example, file conflicts due to files moving in the upgrade, but it wouldn't be for Linton Debian dot org. Um, but there was actually uh, someone who proposed that we did have the stable version of all the packages, and then we would also do the upgrade test from stable to unstable uh, as the same way of handling that. That is actually that is actually a valid point we could put on there. Uh, now, multiple version and architecture support also includes um, a part that f some people use is uh, merge changes a tool to merge multiple changes for multiple architectures into one changes and then just doing one upload. And in the past that worked, but after I added group processing it broke horribly. Uh, and in the past it has worked because Lintian was doing things in the right order for the wrong reasons, and it just happened to work. Um, but this would be actually giving official support for it. And if combined with the static analysis framework, perhaps we can do even more sophisticated checks, although not on lintian.org, or not as a part of Lintian, but people in this room might set up some check using this. So, are we getting something? Uh, among the other ideas I have gathered is this, um, the last one here, about using a domain-specific language. If you happen to have looked at the Lintian source code, there is at least one of the checks, which is a huge loop uh, consisting of a th thousand line loop doing if file matches something, uh, some regular expression or is in some list, we um, would like to see a dependency, we, that Im must imply a dependency or else you get this tag or you have to do this or that or to get that. So there is a potential here to refactor a lot of the code while writing a simple fairly simple domain specific language which hopefully would cover a lot of the cases and simplifying a lot of checks and for the rest of the cases we would fall back to the standard protocol we're using now that is also my idea um, analyzing build locks for common potential problems there you go yeah there's a bug report on that um, I don't think Lynchin could support that reliably because it involves analyzing locks which have a variety of different uh, output formats and whatnot. But I think we could add that under this as a uh, application for a static analysis framework to do that. That being said, I wouldn't rule out patches that could use something, but most of the uh, severity of things are static, so when we start the run, we can't change them to be more severe. Yeah? Is there an easy way to get uh, all build, lo build logs of uh, build Debian now? Uh, the logs from the uh, Debian run? Uh, the Linjian run? No, no, from the uh, Debian builds. Yes, it's Okay. So it's then just a matter of uh, grep uh, queries and. Certainly, but it's. 
I am not certain that the other Lintium maintainers will approve it. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lintium isn't allowed to depend on net network because you want re reliable results. You want the same results every time you run it. And if there's network services involved, you they probably might respond with something else and you get different results and that's not in the in the aim of Lintian. So the reason I uh, want to have the build block analysis in Lintian is we have diff very different places currently where we analyze build blocks. That's uh, on the build list on a case by case basis. In IA64, we do reject some package uploads by warnings. Did? Okay. Um, and um, we do have some uh, uh, issues with, with passing build flags to, to the compiler, which does not happen in many, many packages. And we do not have a place to catch these uh, um, issues. Um, and from, from so if, if I look at the output, uh, uh, of Lintian, I think it's the correct place to do the checks. To have uh, all these checks uh, does not honor C flex or um, does ignore some, some warnings from the compiler, um, to have them together with the other Lintian warnings. And uh, I think it, it's a very, a very fundamental uh, thing to have. As one of the build team maintainers, uh, we also would like to have some that checks it and maybe rejects or not uploads the package based on some warnings like I 64 used to do, but it doesn't do anymore now. I think it's not an issue uh, of the build the maintainers, it's an issue of the package builds and uh, to have a common place to, to collect these warnings. So, so just, um, well, I would like to see Elitia not, uh, not uh, um, well, that, that you have the build logs as, a, as an additional uh, uh, resource and, and have the results presented with the other results. Okay, uh, uh, Lucas has one. So I agree it's important to have um, all warnings and errors about packages displayed in a central place where the, maintain that, where the maintainer will see them, but I'm not sure if uh, abusing Lintian for that is a good idea. But uh, the problem is that uh, if you, when you run Lintian on a package, uh, you get to see the warnings about the package that you just, that you are working, that you are working on while uh, you would see warnings for some things that you need to, for which you need to upload the package to get it fixed. Okay. So from a Lintian maintainer point of view, um, the problem in analyzing build logs is that it's not really a part of anything. Um, currently we check their packages, we check source packages, which is basically the DSC file from where we extract the uh, tarballs we need. Um, adding, sort of injecting a build log into the source file, which uh, source package which would be the central, the best place to do it. Uh, because else we would analyze the log for each binary package. Um, it's still difficult to do that, injecting it, um, at least in Linton itself. I am again thinking about uh, referring it to the static analysis framework um, and such, including external data to be injected together with it. Um, it's not Obviously, you're not going to end up checking your package when you upload uh, to the Debian archive. It's not going to, well, end up in Lintian Debian at all, unfortunately, in that way. But it's currently my uh, best guess if I uh, look at it. We, we have this bug on DPKG where we're considering uh, adding 
by storing the build log and listing it in the changes file. So in te theory, it would make sense, but uh, unfortunately, uh, I fear that uh, th the interest is going down in this because uh, once we have uh, uh, throw away debs uh, that we upload and uh, that all the builds are rebuilt, uh, all the uh, other architectures are, are rebuilt on the server side, uh, it's not going to be interesting anymore. So I fear this bug will never be fixed. That uh, in theory, it would make sense for Lintian to uh, also op uh, check the build logs if it's associated to the source package via the changes file. Yes, uh, if that part was done, we would technically have access in Lindian terms to the log file and we could use the group processing part to uh, analyze the log or just the changes itself. Um, from there to actually doing it, I see a couple of problems personally with actually doing it reliably since the output of the moment can be very different and some logs, well, some logs just say compiling file and that's it. Uh, you get a list of files compiled and you don't get the actual command line run. Uh, so in that case, we would be better off passing the entire build system of upstream, which is not entirely trivial either. But yes, we, we could look at that, but I would wait till we actually have the logs with the changes file for that. Okay. Um, another thing I could bring up is um, this part here with getting more developers. Um, before I joined, there was over 200 bucks writing on the BTS. Now we're down to 192 for bucks writing. So if you're interested, we do need manpowers. Especially, we need de diverse developers. So. A common thing among Lintian developers appear to be they do Perl and some of them are either on the policy team or on the release team but we have very few Python developers or actually from a lot of teams, corner teams and that also means we don't know the internals of all the policies for other teams which makes it very hard to write reliable checks for them so if you are working on a team and you feel your checks or policies are not there, you could uh, feel free to join us and uh, we'll try to help. Game. What we got here? Should have. So, who did this one? I'm, yeah, could you explain what you mean with this? Do you hear me? Yeah. Um, kind of um, give an option if you know that you are breaking a law or a rule, um, but you have to do it um, for your internal packages um, to install software in opt or whatever. Um, to have a global override um, option f so you can apply a specific uh, kind of pattern to your packages and just ignore some stuff. I am actually very pleased to tell you that the, um, with the profiles you can just write a profile that makes it ignore the given tag. So with the new Lynchian release coming in to release, yeah. that actually ought to be solved. Okay, cool. Um, Okay. Um, so, other than that, what do we got? Are there anyone here considering to do a Lynchian Debian.org like setup? Because we have been, I know of other than Lynchian and Debian.org, we have uh, some derivative, a single one doing it with help from Ross directly. Um, but is that something people are actually interested in doing? There have been a couple of attempts to do lintian.abridge.com for the obvious reasons. Uh, I think that the last person who tried to do it 
wandered off at some point. Um, I don't know whether it's still... Possi possibly got stuck. Um, but uh, was there, is, do you know if there's anything on Ubuntu Wire at the moment? No, there is nothing currently. There's nothing on Ubuntu Wire currently. Um, the main thing that has been blocking me is trying to get a way to get some of the hard codings that are in the harness script rearranged so that I can run them in an arbitrary location cleanly and safely. I wasn't referring to you, I was referring to the previous person. Uh, so ah, no, okay. <laughs> no, the documentation from the previous person was useful but incomplete. Okay. So um, if you're interested, feel free to follow up afterwards and we can look at it. I have been working on cleaning that part up actually. So um, we have here a code is called this bad according to. I think we had a, talk, a part of that yes last year with the scope of lynching and I can't really remember what the outcome of that was. Um, I don't suppose anyone here now remembers. Okay, I'll take that out with me. But there is a chance that we will um, actually the CPP check we will probably just leave as it is because uh, we already have a separate service doing CCP check already. So there would be not much idea in doing that. And I think the other one after CPP check, uh, I think that's one SAG is working on. I think he would fall under the uh, static analysis framework. At least we have mentioned that idea to him. But so good quality. Is that okay? Mm. Any other ideas, useful things you hope Lynchin could do for you um, that Lynchin doesn't do, something Lynchin do, does it shouldn't do? Do you find Lynchin useful? Yes. yes. Well, that's a start. Um, <laughs> it's a neat something. Um, So should we start working on box now that there's nothing to do? <laughs> okay. There, oh, there's one. Um, I, I have to admit uh, I'm, I'm, I didn't check this before asking, but uh, is there um, some guy that explain how to write lens and checks? Um, and uh, the, the second part is uh, um, uh, probably uh, we need uh, uh, to um, to make the process of writing the Lintzian checks as easy as possible. The idea of having a specific language is um, is uh, is good, in my opinion. But um, in in general, everything that can um, um, makes it easy for people who don't want to understand uh, uh, all the things uh, uh, that uh, make Lintzian works. They should anyway be able to uh, write tests, uh, for example, for their team, for their language, for what they're doing. I'll just jot down some note here. There's I, I think we should be really pretty, I, d I don't know if there's been much work on a DSL um, so far, but I think we should be really pretty careful about taking that approach. Um, the, uh, you do often find that writing checks involves, uh, uh, you need general language facilities quite often. Um, so, you know, you need to use maybe not all the features in Perl, that's probably impossible, but uh, uh, you need to use an uh, an awful lot of the standard features of a language in order to implement a check properly. Um, and I'd be a little worried about ending up with a DSL that wasn't actually, wasn't useful enough for writing checks until you got to the point where it was about as complex as Perl, or where you basically had to embed chunks of Perl into it. 
um, I wonder if beefing up the library is a, is a better um, approach to that. Uh, are, there, are there people who are writing, trying to write Lentian checks who are just scared of writing Perl or find it very difficult to, to write it? I own, oh, that's very loud. I only ever wrote one check, but I didn't find it very hard. So I know Perl okay. I'm not a Perl wizard, but. It's hard to tell. Yeah, you know, I, it maybe took me an afternoon to go from, oh, I should write this to, okay, send the patch. So I, I think it's not, I, I, I understand that people's experience might be different, but I don't know. And my, my experience was okay that there was enough hints and document, well, anyway, for what that's worth. Um, yes, I also wrote one, one of the LinkedIn checks more or less recently. And if you're hanging out on RSC in DBN QA channel, um, Niels usually is around and very helpful and responsive. And including the tests, it almost it also didn't took me much longer than a day. But yeah, I know I have quite some experience myself, so I'm not one of the bars. Right. Um, the, as, as usual, writing the test takes the majority of the time, as usual, for a test-driven uh, program. But uh, the, I, I think the original driver for that was uh, being able to embed fragments of, uh, fragments of checkiness into policy. Uh, and then being able to extract those automatically out into Lintian. Um, I don't think that's ever really got past the stage of an idea, but I think that's where the idea of a DSL came from. Okay. That might be it. Um, actually, on the test, I am pleased to announce we are uh, got around over 70% coverage now of all tags, 80% uh, if we look at the old legacy test as well, but... We're actually progressing, uh, thanks to people including tests in their patches. So, are there anyone here who'd like to uh, work on a check, have something in mind that Lingen could check for but it doesn't do and they haven't submitted a bug report for it or? No? Yeah? You. I do, might have some ideas, but I, I just don't get lithium right now, so. I uh, just go up and design, for example, and limitations in our design and such. I don't get it. Okay, <laughs> so. I, I, I haven't read anything about it. Right, that's not what you can do there. Yeah. Okay, but prefer to come talk to me afterwards and we'll okay. figure out. So um, another thing I happen to know is that we have some won't fix bugs against Lintian, which we leave open for the sole purpose of, well, they are a good idea, but Lintian cannot do it due to limitations or design choices. Um, so have anyone actually checked it out and considered to implementing some of these, or uh, do you think it's a good idea for us to leave them there? Does the Lentian team look at overrides in the archive? Sorry? Does the Lentian team look at existing overrides that package, uh, package maintainers have added um, for stupidity or for whatever other reasons? I am not sure how many checks are actually in that department. Um, I think we're trying to be rather civil. I don't know if. We don't have the test upstream make file for EDSC, which was, I think, filed by Ganef a while back. So I don't think we have any of those. No, I mean, are, you, are the Lintian maintainers looking at the overrides that people have added to their packages to figure out why they've been added and whether it's just because the maintainer 
dislikes Lintin or because there's an actual bug or... Oh, you uh, mean the patches? No, the overrides. Overrides, oh no. Uh, overrides. We accept overrides at face value. Um, in fact, when I have looked at lintinddebian.org, occasionally I have found packages where I suspect the maintainer simply just fills the override file automatically from a uh, running Lintian. Uh, I didn't check the rules file. It might actually have a sample I can produce, but uh, I didn't check. But sometimes you just see a list of overrides and you think um, this one is a two-click thing you can fix in the description. Shouldn't be too hard. So what, do you what do you think should be done about such people? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have to remain professional. You, on the other hand, <laughs> go ahead, find a bat. And, uh, <laughs> now, um, I mean, I don't understand the desire to automatically overwrite everything in it. Uh, if you don't care what Lintian says, just upload it as it is. And if it doesn't have any fatal tags, you can largely ignore it, except for your peers might knock your head off with them. Um, whatever warnings are narrow, it shows up, but... So, a uh, follow-up to that. Um, is there a way to put a comment associated with a war an, an override? Uh, no, long-standing wish list item, actually, and I did try to implement it once, but um, I ended up giving up on it. Um, but it is on my to-do list somewhere down there. Um, but yes, here... You can add comments in the override itself, um, but we don't extract them. Um, so the problem is they don't um, show up on the Cindy window at all, for example. Ah, I can spell. Well. So, okay, any other ideas, proposals regarding overrides and others? Alternatively, I can sell the part where I, we implemented a new profile stuff that overrides in some cases can be ignored. We have done this for the um, fatal overrides, uh, fatal auto rejects. So when you run Lynchian, the coming version of Lynchian will not allow you to override fatal tags in uh, the standard Debian profile. So you should actually see the same output as the FTP master's radio run. Um, on this item here, um, that is a good idea, but we actually have quite a lot of bugs in the engine itself to fix. Uh, so we are actually not very active on the um, contacting outside people. Um, actually, in relation to that, it says in the engine manual, we will file bugs, so you shouldn't do it. Uh, unfortunately, that is not as true as it sounds. So if anyone is interested in working with filing bugs based on Lintian tags, um, maybe I can hook you up with something to do. I don't think that was ever true. No, but... It was an aspiration. It might have been. Uh, there is the possibility of um, taking the serious uh, tags with a certain severity extract those from the engine's uh, files, uh, and then check those packages that have that particular tag and just autofile it. Um, if you're interested in doing a script like that, feel free to drop by also. Um, it might prove useful. Um, uh, there's a question. Just if someone wants to do that, talk to me, because my own archive reboot scripts could help in uh, not filing duplicate bugs. Okay. okay, can you write the a line here for the notes for that? That would be great. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> uh, no, I, I just thought about it. So, just at that point too. Uh, 
So, um, yes, um, any other things, ideas? No, I didn't suspect as much. Um, okay, oh, the, you have a question? Um, one last idea for ideas about how to get checks, ide uh, ideas for new checks. Um, read the Debian mentors list and review packages and you'll find lots of problems that possibly aren't yet checked by Lentian. Yes, uh, here I, uh, I'm already following the Debian mentors list. I'm not actually reading mails too actively anymore, unfortunately. As it is, we already have a lot of checks request for checks filed against Lynch and Debian .org. Uh, I tend to work on the easiest one to keep the bug count down, which looks prettier. Um, it's not because I don't like the other checks particularly, um, but it's just a question of keeping it down and keeping my motivation up. Um, so actually going looking for them for extra things is um, a little like shooting myself in the foot right now. So. If you feel like helping, you're free to uh, check these and come up with the suggestions. Um, usually it's not that hard to, the simple cases is usually not too hard. It's three or four lines of protocol, I can do that in 10 minutes uh, or less. So that is very welcome. Um, also, the tag descriptions could use a lot of um, of uh, updating occasionally, so if you see people not understanding the tag descriptions, uh, block reports on that as well, very welcome as well. Incidentally, if there's anyone working with Perl and translations, um, translating tag descriptions is a, was actually up last year and we haven't, um, well, there's a work book on it, so if anyone's interested in that we could uh, also have a look at that. Okay. In that case, I don't really have a lot of things to do other than keep asking you for more ideas. So I guess if there's nothing else, I will just end early. All right. Thank you for listening.